It's a revolutionary trading software that empowers futures and stock traders to easily create and backtest trading systems in minutes. Ryan Jones, as I said, is the owner of Quantum Trading, and he's been trading since he was 16. What is that, Ryan? 10 years now? <laughs> uh, 11 or 12, oh, okay. if I were to be absolutely <laughs> honest. <laughs> he is one of the youngest authors ever to publish a book in the futures industry, and he turned his $15,000 account into over 107000 in less than 90 days, short-term trading the S&P, I believe. Right, Ryan? Yeah, and that was in a contest. Uh, I actually contest. broke a record in the contest. Yep, yep. Super, super. Well, while you get your screen sharing things going, uh, Raleigh's going to go over what you're presenting to us today, and then we'll stay here in case you have any technical problems. Well, that's great. And once All again, right. we're delighted to have Ryan here with us, and he's going to be talking about never again fearing a stock market crash. How about that, folks? <laughs> and part of that, he's going to be talking about the importance of properly hedging in the market. He's going to talk about why there really is no perfect daily hedge technique and his favorite strategy for making a killing when stocks do crash. And with that, Ryan, welcome. It's delight We're delighted to have you here with us today. Right. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to be on and uh, present my stuff. Um, so I have a lot to cover, like just a ton. So can I just like go right into it? Absolutely. You go for it and uh, we'll keep an eye All on right. the chat panel and feed you questions at the end. Hey, you bet. All right. So I do want to welcome you, um, to this uh, presentation. Never again, fear a stock market crash. I can actually, uh, talk about this for hours on end, like, uh, I could probably spend 10 hours talking about this stuff. So I had to kind of choo pick and choose what it is I include in this one and what it, uh, and what I don't. Uh, but I think you are in for a, a very nice uh, uh, treat as we go through this uh, presentation. Um, you know, stock market crashes tend to scare a lot of people. It, it, it In fact, it drives the whole methodology of a lot of traders and investors. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you different ways to approach the market so you do not have to fear a stock market crash again. And there are, it's not just about fearing a stock market crash. It's also about profiting in a stock market crash. There are strategies out there that when the, when the markets crash, they're absolutely unbelievable trading opportunities if you know where to look. But I can't get into that one today. I have to stick with uh, not fearing the stock market crash. And so I'm gonna show you how to consistently beat the market with a fraction of the risk exposure at the same time, so that you not only are not fearing a stock market crash, but that you are also uh, generating above average returns at a uh, fraction of the risk. So there are two basic ways to accomplish this task. The first is to implement effective hedging strategies. And I think this is kind of a no-brainer for a lot of uh, traders and investors, but if you search the internet, you're gonna get a lot of bad information about hedging. And I'm gonna spend a little bit of time on that. And then the second way, and this is one that is not quite as, um, as a no-brainer, but it, it, uh, it absolutely is very important in the, long, uh, in the long run and in the grand scheme of things, especially when you're talking about uh, not fearing a stock market crash. And that is to implement strategies with less market exposure. So those are the two broad pieces of information that I'm gonna just introduce basically today. I'm gonna give you a lot of information, but I, uh, there's, like I said, there's just not enough time to really flesh everything out on this. Um, you're going to have uh, you're going to have enough information to know where to start and where to begin. I'm going to give you some great strategies along the way. But when you implement these two principles, you'll find that you can actually be more aggressive in your investment approach. And why would you want to be more aggressive in your investment approach? Because there are two major major benefits. If you're able to be more aggressive in your investment approach, it can have a profound effect on your long-term growth. So the first reason 
that you might want to be more aggressive is because your long-term growth is far more exponential with an aggressive investment approach. When I say aggressive investment approach, you're putting yourself in a position to do more than the average 8 to 9% average return that stocks give you over a long period of time. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. Uh, this is starting with a $100,000 account, just so that you can see why you'd want to do this and why you want to pay attention to this. Uh, if you start with a $100,000 account, over the course of about 20 years, you're talking about uh, growing that 100000 to just over 600000 if you average about 10% annually. If you can increase your average annual return to 15% instead of 10%, so you increase it by 5%, on a average, which is not easy to do uh, in most standard investment opportunities, right? So 15% is like uh, hedge funds that uh, produce 15% annual returns are um, you know, rare, uh, depending on how much they're risking. Nonetheless, that increases the compounded return to over 1.5 million. And then if you can go from 15 to 20 percent uh, on an annual basis, on average, and compound that 20 percent, you're talking about growing that into almost 4 million. So we're talking about massive, massive differences um, based on a small increase in your overall average annual return. It matters. It absolutely matters. And then the second thing that I want to uh, uh, present to you here is that market corrections or market crashes actually kill long-term exponential growth rates. So let me show you a graph. If you can, uh, let's say, I, I don't want to say necessarily of, uh, completely avoid, but if you can, uh, for the most part, avoid the major market downturns over the last 20 years, you're talking about a dramatic increase in the overall return in SPY from 1997 to 2012. Is Here's a graph for that, and you can see where there are major downturns. And in fact, because of these major downturns, uh, the overall growth during that time period maximum at the, uh, um, uh, as far as a total return, was only about 130%. So, uh, that is uh, not, you know, tremendous, tremendous growth over the course of that uh, long time period, which is about 15 years. But if you could avoid those, look at the green line. That's essentially what uh, the uh, the chart would look like, or your your uh, rate of growth would look like, if you can somehow just simply avoid the market turns, and then when the market resumes, your uh, portfolio begins to resume again. So. That is a major, major uh, accomplishment and a major effect on your overall investment portfolio. So $1,000 invested in, uh, SPY, in S&P 500 or SPY in 1995, suffering through the market crashes, uh, turns into about $11,000 over the course of uh, the time, uh, the last 25 years. $1,000 invested in S&P 500 in 1994, uh, excuse me, 1995, avoiding the market major crashes, you're talking about turning that thousand into almost thirty thousand dollars. So again, these things are uh, have dramatic long-term effects on your portfolio. And so, what I want to show you, and this is an actual account. This is actually a small hedge fund that I trade. Uh, and uh, I've been tracking the daily equity of it just to sh give you an example of, of uh, improving your overall returns uh, by limiting your exposure. Uh, and the SPY return during this time period is a negative 0.12%. That's as, as of today. And then the small fund is actually up 4%. So um, this is actual... Uh, actual application of what I'm going to be showing you today. Okay, so let's spend a few minutes on uh, hedging strategies. And if you search the internet, as I mentioned, you're going to come up with a lot of different blogs and articles uh, and websites that talk about hedging, and they all kind of look like this. Uh, if you put a portion of uh, your capital in cash, for example, that's one suggestion. Uh, another suggestion that I recently read was buy gold or silver, and that's one of the more popular ones, uh, not a good one. 
but I'll get to that. Uh, another one is to invest in bearish ETFs. That's, that is prominent on the internet. Uh, then there is the advice of timing the market uh, or putting money in cash uh, would be a, t a form of timing the market. So you take your money out of the stocks and then put it in uh, to cash. Uh, then cost average when the market moves down is a popular one. And then buying puts or buying puts on stock market indexes is a popular one. Well, let's just look at these really quick. So put a portion of capital in cash. Well, this is basically the same as timing the market. They're asking you to time the market. Uh, and this is not a hedge. This requires something other than hedging against the stock market crash. It requires you the, uh, to uh, have the ability to properly time when you should get out of the market, when you should get back into the market, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, some people can do it. Some people can't. Most can't, to be quite frank. Um, a lot of people who are uh, scared of market crashes always think it's right now. It's going to be right now. It's going to be right now. It's imminent. Well, they would have been out of the market years ago, and uh, they would have missed the largest bullish move in history. Right? So that one's not a great one. Then you have buy gold or silver. And this is probably the most popular one. You see it on TV all the time. Buy gold, buy gold, buy gold. Well, it's not truly a hedge against significant corrections or a market crash and can actually counter any gains in stocks. And so here is a chart of uh, Spider Gold, GLD, against the uh, S&P 500. So Spider is in uh, purple, S&P is in red. And you can see this first area of arrows here you can see that uh, while stocks were moving down back in 2008, so was gold. And then when stocks began moving up, gold began moving up, right? So that uh, so there's some correlation there. And then gold began moving down while stocks continued to move up during 2013, 14, 15, et cetera. And so this is not a hedge. There is, there is absolutely no way that you can actually count on gold or silver to be a, he a true hedge in the market. So we'll throw that one out for right now. Uh, then the next one is to invest in a bearish ETF. And there are several that you can invest in, a lot of different bearish ETFs out there. And unfortunately, it is completely unnecessary. If you invest 10% of your earnings in a bearish ETF, the net result is exactly like having 10% less invested in stocks with one exception and that is you're not collecting dividends. So it's almost, irre it's, it's like, why do it? Because all you're doing is offsetting the gains from the rest of your portfolio. That's all you're doing. Uh, and when the stocks move down, yeah, this will move up a little bit, but the rest of your, the rest of your portfolio will move down. So this, if you just put a little bit of thought to it, um, logically, there, it makes no sense whatsoever uh, to treat that anyway as a hedge. And then finally, the timing the market aspect. Timing the market is not a true hedge. And again, it lacks efficiency. And I uh, mentioned that because it's the same thing as moving money into cash. It's just simply a form of timing the market. Then you have cost average when the market moves down. And uh, that requires you to come up with more money to invest. So while the stocks are moving down and your portfolio is taking a loss, they're saying, put more money in, put more money. Well, where are you, where are you gonna get more money? How's that a hedge, right? That's not a hedge because it requires you to come up with more money. And then it's also not a hedge because what if stocks keep moving down, right? So um, again, not, not what we're looking for. Then you come to the last one. And this last one is to buy puts in stock market indexes or some equivalent type of option uh, play. The problem with that one is that it's generally expensive. All right, so let's say I have a $50,000 stock portfolio and I wanna hedge it using puts in SPY, uh, which is very common. Well, so if I, buy an at the money spy that approximately that uh, expires approximately three months out that's going to cost me about three percent if that's what i want to do or 12 percent annually right are you catching that 
the average return in stocks is about nine to ten percent. And if you use a hedge strategy that costs you twelve percent, why? What's the point? Right. So it's very expensive, and um, it can cost a lot of money and actually uh, completely uh, eat up all your gains if you're not careful. And so this one is the most effective as far as hedging against the stock market crash, because if, if stocks do crash, then you will not suffer that mass, uh, that max dro uh, max massive drop in your portfolio. Uh, but the problem is, is that if stocks don't crash, if they stay the same, or if they move up, you're going to be eating a lot of, a lot of costs, right? So, uh, so if I do buy the put, it will, hedge against the market. The problem is that it's really, really expensive. In addition to that, in this example that I give you here, the $50,000 portfolio, in SPY, one contract of SPY is worth $39,000. As of this morning, it was trading around 390, 391, somewhere around there. That's a $39,000 value. So if you buy a put in SPY that only hedges technically $39,000 a year stock portfolio, uh, that means that $11,000 dollars of your portfolio is uncovered. And so to cover the rest of it, guess what you have to do? You have to buy another put. And then you're over hedged and you're talking about massive, massive expenses. So uh, that's uh, the biggest problem with buying puts. However, the other problem is out of the list that I just gave you, buying puts is one of the of only two truly effective ways to truly hedge against the stock market crash or a mar major market correction. That's the issue, is that really, if, uh, if that's what you wanna do as far as hedging is concerned, that's what's available. And so this is the starting point for hedging. And the question is, okay, well, what are we, what are we going to do with all of that? Well, you know, buying puts, I need to give you some context here. Buying puts provides insurance. That's really essentially what it is. We're buying insurance. It's just really expensive insurance. But let me tell you something about insurance companies that sell insurance. They are generally profitable. Uh, and they're generally very profitable, as a matter of fact. Here's a chart of progressive. Progressive insurance versus SPY since 1999 uh, through 2020, I believe. And you'll notice here that Progressive just blew away the broad market index as an insurance company. Now, they're not all like that, but insurance is a very profitable business. And that's because it's expensive. Uh, so the one thing that I do every time I buy something and they offer a warranty, so a TV um, or some sort of electronic, a computer, you know, whatever it is. They offer a warranty, I decline the warranty, and then I put that money in an investment account to be used when one of the things eventually does break. So if you have all these things and you don't buy the warranty and you put all that money, you'd be shocked at how much money you can put away over time versus how much you actually use the funds to replace an item that breaks. Absolutely shocked. Insurance is a racket. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it is. All right, so we, you know, at the same time, we still don't want to fear a stock market crash. So a couple of cautions as we get into this, I'm going to, uh, and I'm going to show you how to uh, deal with this. Uh, but before I do, there are a couple of cautions. There is no perfect hedge. First of all, even with buying puts, there's no perfect hedge. Number one, your portfolio may not have a strong correlation to the S&P. And if you're, uh, if it doesn't have a strong correlation to the S&P, uh, then the S&P may be just fine, your portfolio crashes and you have no hedge, right? So you need to, first of all, make sure that you have a correlation uh, in, in your uh, portfolio to the S&P. Or for that matter, if, uh, if you have a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, biotech stocks or technology stocks, whatever, you may have a portfolio that tracks better with IWM, uh, or you may have a portfolio that tracks better with QQQ, or if you're going with just the tried and true big stocks, it may, uh, it may be better uh, correlated to the Dow. So you need to 
do a little bit of tracking of your portfolio because you can use this approach with any of these that I'm about to show you. And then finally, hedging strategies do not hedge against uh, normal market swings. So you have to be aware of that, cognizant of that fact that uh, a one or two percent move in the underlying market is not necessarily going to be hedged as far as your portfolio is concerned. So in this, uh, uh, the S&P may be up 1%, for example, and your portfolio actually may be down 1% on one day or vice versa on the next day. Um, or it may move 3 or 4% and your hedge didn't really give you a 3 to 4% uh, gain while your portfolio dropped 3 to 4%. So you have to be aware that it's there's not a perfect hedge and in more normal market movement, um, it's not going to be, as a general rule, it's not going to be a hedge. Okay. So the first two to three percent is just not going to be covered in the cost of the hedge. Uh, part of that is because there is a cost to the hedge, right? And part of that is because uh, the, the hedge is not going to be perfectly correlated to your portfolio. And so just ignore trying to hedge the minor market moves on a daily basis. It's a waste of time. You don't need to worry about it. And it, it's uh, something that um, uh, I think is a, a waste of money as well. Okay, then if you hedge and stocks move up 5%, what happens? Okay, so I put on a hedge today. I put on a hedge, we're trading at 390 in SPY. Let's say I, I buy a 390 put and then the market moves to 405. Well, guess what? If the market comes back down, I'm not now hedged that gain, right? So you have that issue to deal with as well. So you have to move your hedge. As the market moves, you have to move your hedge. That can become more expensive because if the market moves up and I bought a put, it's not just time value that's leaving now. It's, all, it's also um, uh, extrinsic value from market movement. And so the value of that put is actually going to decrease faster. Right, so if I buy a, a put that's three months down the road and the market moves away from that put, then I may lose the entire value of that put within a month. And so you then now you've spent three three percent on a hedge, and granted you're still hedged from that point down, but the market's way up here now, right? So uh, it, it's an issue, and you have to be aware of it. And that's why we're going to be discussing the strategies of how to deal with this. So buying puts is the starting point, but there's one key ingredient that you must look at if you want to implement a put buying hedge strategy. And this is where every article or almost every article that I've seen uh, where they're buying puts and using puts as a hedge, they, they do not include this critical piece of information. If it weren't for this, I would not buy hedges inputs as a general rule there are some exceptions but as a, as a general rule, that's the case all right so if the market is up an average of nine percent annually and that's uh, pretty liberal especially when you're talking about uh bringing in uh, cost of living inflation etc uh, etc et it actually adjusts down in the long run it's like 6.8 percent after uh, being adjusted for inflation so it's not that great but if your puts cost you 10 percent why bother, right? So the key to using a long put strategy to hedge your portfolio is to find a way to pay for the cost of the hedge. That's what you need to do. You need to make it where the hedge, the cost of the hedge is being offset by something. And this is the first thing that I do when I'm looking at a hedge. The first thing that I do is that I buy puts that are out of the money, not at the money. All right, because we're dealing with costs at this point, and we have to absolutely, if you don't deal with costs, you're going to be, uh, you're going to regret it. So the first thing that I do as far as dealing with costs is I buy a 5% out of the money put as a hedge instead of an at the money uh, put. So I'm not hedged for the first 5% drop in stocks. So any 5% movement, I'm, I'm just not going to be hedged. I can deal with a 5% drop in my portfolio, right? That's not a stock market crash. That's not 40 or 50 or 60% if the stock market crashes. And for doing that, I am actually going to pay much less 
on the hedge. My three month 5% out of the money call or put, excuse me, is 1.9% of the value as opposed to 3% of the value. And so of course, if you multiply that by four, because I'm gonna be doing it every three months is, and that's without moving the hedge as the market moves up, uh, but I'll do that every three months. And then that would cost me about 8% if that's all I did. So that's getting it to a more manageable point, but still that's barely, uh, uh, barely below the average over the last 10 years in stocks, which has been a little over 9%. So again, it's, it's can't be done that way. You have to pay for it. But that put right now, as of this morning, as a matter of fact, uh, comes to $750, okay, for a $39,000 uh, portfolio. $750 to hedge a $39,000 portfolio. If you break that down on a weekly basis, and this is really how you have to look at it, um, your insurance for hedging your portfolio comes to $63 a week, okay? So what we need to do is we need to find a way to cover that $63 a week. And there are lots of ways to do it. And I'm not gonna get into all these ways. I'm gonna give them to you here, and then I'm gonna uh, explore the, the first one for the most part, because it's one of the greatest ways to do it. Uh, and most traders don't even realize the skewed warped value between these options that allow you to do it, but it is, it's a really good one. So the first one is sell out of the money or at the money weekly calls in SPY against your long put. And I know what the, f the very first objection to that is that, well, then you are limiting your growth portfolio. We'll get to there. Okay. I already know that. I already know about that. Um, so we'll get to it. Uh, the second is to sell out of the money weekly puts in SPY. Now that one uh, requires a little bit more, a uh, uh, little bit more ability to withstand a move down. It requires a little bit more technical uh, expertise as far as how these options work in order to do that and not put yourself at even more exposure than you were before you started hedging. So I don't suggest that one for very many people, but it is something that I've done in the past um, and can be effective in helping you pay for the hedge. And then you can sell uh, out of the money calls or puts in another ETF. Uh, so for example, IWM is not valued as much as SPY, but you can almost bring in the same amount of, of premium uh, in, uh, in IWM as you can SPY. Not quite, uh, but it's very close. And so you can actually do that to, uh, to help pay for the cost. And then that way you're not uh, offsetting quite as much as your portfolio uh, from that standpoint. Again, I'll get to that aspect here in a second. Then you choose one or two of your bigger individual stocks. So if you have like a big holding in Tesla, for example, man, you can bring in a lot of premium on out of the money calls and you can pay for the entire hedge of your portfolio uh, by using Tesla calls. If you're long Tesla, if you're not long Tesla, don't ever, 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 ever sell a call against a, a stock you're not long in. Uh, that is an absolute no, no, absolute rule of thumb. Don't do it ever, period, end of story. I've been selling premium uh, for a long, long, long time, and I would never sell calls against a naked stock. So just make that, uh, <laughs> wanna make sure you understand the context of that. Or you can do a combination of all of the above because all you're doing, trying to do is you're trying to bring in $63 a week. So I'm gonna get you started down this path, down this path and then we're gonna have to kind of back up a little bit and uh, back away from it uh, just a little bit. Uh, because like I said, I can talk 10 hours about this stuff um, and have in the past. <laughs> All right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's talk about the actual numbers and, and actual processes, actual strategy. Uh, this is uh, this is mind blowing type stuff. Uh, just not, not even in the context of hedging your portfolio, uh, but just trading it as a strategy itself. This is gonna blow your mind. Okay, so let's say I want to buy 
a uh, 370 put. That's 5% out of the money in SPY. Uh, and if SPY crashes 40%, that, that 370 put is going to hedge an awful lot of the down move, most of the down move, as a matter of fact, of whatever stocks crash. And the total cost for that is going to be about uh, 700, is showing here $736, so a little less than what I was talking. Uh, I, I said 750, so that's 736 on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sell a slightly out of the money option one week out in SPY to help offset some of that. And you'll notice here that the one week out of the money, 396 call when the market was trading around 391, so it's five points out of the money, a buck 34. You can bring that. So here's the deal with doing the out of the money um, call options. You are bringing in a buck 34 and you're leaving open for a continued move to the upside of about five points over the next week. And it's actually more than that because if stocks move up, uh, the break-even point on this call, if you sell the call at 134, is actually at 397.34. So and before this call starts to offset some of the gains in your portfolio, the stocks actually have to move up significantly, and SPY has to move up to 397.40 in a week before it even starts to offset any of your gains. That's the break-even point, all right? So just from that alone, um, in a one-week basis, you're covering about 15%, almost 15% of the entire cost of the hedge in one week. So if you do it as a spread, you can see here the first, the cost the first week is $6 or $600 uh, uh, per 39000 invested. Uh, so that would be the, the total hedge it'd be $6 or $600 for 39,000 because that's the value of SPY, right? And that's a three month hedge and that's 5% out of the money. Great little, um, great little approach to helping pay for the hedges. Now, the, here's the deal though. That thing costs a, uh, about a buck 34. You can bring in a buck 34 in profit. You only need to bring in $63 a week, not, a, not $134 a week. Right, so there are 12 weeks before the expiration of my hedge or my long 370 put, which means that I only have to sell this six different times to completely pay for the hedge. So at the end of the week on uh, 331, which is actually less than a week away, but on uh, 331, um, there are actually, it's exactly one week away from today. Um, I will exit this one, hopefully at zero or very low price. So I'll collect the entire $134. As long as SPY is trading below 396, that's what it will be. And then I will turn around and I will sell another one week call that is five points out of the money. And hopefully bring in again about a buck 30, buck 35, somewhere around there. And I only have to do that six times over the next 12 weeks to completely pay for my 12 week hedge. Now, obviously you have to continue doing this, right? So um, at the end of the six weeks, if this is what you do, you can stop uh, selling uh, the calls and you have another six weeks of being hedged and you don't have to do anything. When the hedge expires, which will be in, um, on 618, when that hedge expires, then you'll have to roll the hedge. You'll have to start the whole process over again. Okay. so. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it, and I don't have this in here, but another way to do it is to go out as far out of the money as you can to bring in $63. And that way you're not hardly, uh, for, for the market to go that far up in a single week is, um, is not likely. It's not going to happen often, right? It might happen once or twice, but it's not going to happen often. And at that point, you are going far enough out of the money to where you, uh, um, rarely will this approach offset your gains in your portfolio or start begin to offset some of your gains in your portfolio. 
Um, and so you can absolutely do that. You can go further out of the money and just bring in $63. And as long as you're doing that on a consistent basis, you can actually completely pay for your hedge so that your hedge doesn't cost you a thing. Uh, but if you were to do this, if you were to completely do this uh, based on the five point out of the money and, and the current uh, value of that weekly call, did you know that's 17.8% annualized return just alone? That's incredible. Uh, if your entire hedge costs 10%, and you're bringing in 17.8%, you've almost beat the stock market returns just from that strategy without any of the market exposure, right? Because you have a long put. And as a matter of fact, if you don't have a stock portfolio and you put this on and, and markets crash, guess what? You're gonna make a lot of money, right? So it, you can do this without a portfolio and the numbers work out over time. It's not gonna be exact and perfect, um, uh, in that sequence, but that's how the numbers work out. So you bring in over the course of a 12 week period, bring in a buck 34 a week, that comes to 1608. Your put costs 750. That means you make $858 on the hedging process. That comes to an 8.8% .8 annualized return you're almost where, uh, beating the average return of the stock market with this approach based on current value of the options. Plus you have limited increase uh, in a stock portfolio, but again, that limited increase is uh, based on a five week jump every, or five point jump every single week. And that's not gonna happen every single week. Uh, five points every single week, it almost doubles the value of, the, of, of SPY. And not quite, but that's how, um, that's how crazy that uh, particular approach is. So you can absolutely do this. And in fact, you can create a, a synthetic hedge stock portfolio. You can buy 100 shares of SPY. Uh, you can buy a 5% out of the money three month put option, and then you can sell the five point out of the money call option. This is a synthetic hedge stock portfolio. And if SPY goes nowhere, you're going to make about 10% over the next uh, 12 months. If SPY moves higher, you'll make about 20% over the next 12 months because it's constantly going out of the money. And then if SPY moves down, you could see a range of anywhere between negative 10% to, to positive 10%. But talk about a lower risk exposure uh, in the market to still have a good solid opportunity to beat or come close to beating the market just with the hedging strategy. Um, so I wanted to, uh, I hope I'm conveying the value of this uh, because this is this hedging strategy is actually worth everything you paid to attend this conference. All right, so <laughs> I know, I know, I know it was free. So <laughs> uh, anyway, um, if you were to carry this on, you could can, you could uh, also look at put options. Um, you can do at the money put options. Here's an example of an at the money put option that was a few weeks ago. It's actually um, uh, higher now, but as of right now, you can bring in $300 on the at the money call option to pay for your put. If you were to do that 52 times a year, you're talking about a $17,940 gain, gain on a $39,000 instrument. That's equivalent to a 40% annualized gain without the risk of a stock market crash. So again, lots of different ways to pay for it. You can pay, uh, in, in fact, with uh, by doing an at the money call, you only have to do it once or twice, or uh, excuse me, two or three times to pay for the entire hedge for three months. Um, so if you're willing to kind of time it and say, okay, is when the market moves up, then I'm going to sell an at, a one week at the money call. I'll bring in $300 that pays for almost half of my entire hedge. If the market continues moving up for that short period of time, you'll offset some of your portfolio gains, but you have to have really bad timing to do that because you only have to do it once or uh, twice a week. So if you just wait for the market to move up to sell the at the money call, 
um, you can actually pay it for it in like two or three uh, weeks. Uh, and again, it's an awful lot um, of premium that you're bringing in on these. Now, if you have an $80,000 portfolio, and I need to speed it up here, <laughs> I told you I have a lot to cover. Uh, if you have an $80,000 portfolio, you would need to buy two puts, right, to cover that because it's, the SPY is worth about 39000 So you need to buy two puts, and you can actually pay for both puts by selling just one weekly out of the money called uh, by five points. Right, so um, on two puts, we have to pay for about $120, $125 a week. That's the cost to uh, to hedge an $80,000 portfolio. Uh, but I can do one call, a, that's five points out of the money, and I can pay for over the next 12 weeks and pay for the entire cost of that hedge as long as I'm consistent in how I do it, or I'm close to bringing in that amount. Right. One thing that I tell traders is that you don't necessarily need to, to cover the entire cost of the hedge. You just need to bring it down to a reasonable level. That's really what you need to do. If you can bring your cost of hedge down to you know, one to two to three percent, then you're talking about um, uh, making it worth the while. I'm giving you approaches that can actually pay for the entire thing. It's not going to work out perfectly like that. And so it's not necessarily... Uh, the way that you want to do it. So again, I can spend a lot of time on various ways to pay for hedges. I think this really gets you going as far uh, in the right direction as far as that's concerned. And uh, there's a lot to think about there. I gave you a really solid strategy. You don't even need to have a portfolio to be able to implement it. Uh, but I need to move on and go to the second element to uh, how to never fear a stock market crash again. And that is how to implement strategies with reduced market exposure. That's another way that you can reduce the exposure, you reduce your fear of a stock market crash. If you combine that with hedging as well, then you've got the best of both worlds. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of how you can do that. I'm, this is by no means exhaustive, uh, and I'm not going to be able to explain every detail of these approaches, obviously, in the limited time I, I have, but I'm going to give you the broad uh, brush strokes of this. All right. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you something here in BA. Uh, this is Boeing. Let's say you have Boeing in your stock portfolio. Okay. So however much Boeing you have, you bought Boeing, you're long Boeing. If Boeing crashes, you're at risk. So here's the pandemic, right? So Boeing crashed and it crashed hard. It actually uh, crashed more than uh, most stocks, most uh, major stocks. Boeing, by the way, is a very, very, very solid stock long-term. Uh, if you do a uh, seasonality of Boeing, it is one of the better performing stocks over the last 25 years. And I think it will continue to be, uh, uh, be so once we get past the final uh, stages of uh, of the uh, pandemic effects and whatnot, but nonetheless, uh, Boeing's trading right now at two hundred and forty six dollars a share. So instead of owning Boeing stock and uh, being exposed for the entire value of the stock if the market crashes, I can actually instead sell a one month two hundred and twenty five dollars strike put for four hundred dollars. Okay. That's out of the money. And uh, so the market is trading at 246. If I sell a 225 put for $400, that gives me an 18% annualized return. So if I go out of the money by $20, $25 every month, and this is actually a little bit less than uh, a month away, this is actually 416 expiration. So that's just over three weeks away, barely three weeks away. And uh, that actually increases the average uh, annualized return to about 22, 23%. So I can actually go out of the money, sell a put and have a much bigger return than the average broad market buy and hold approach uh, by doing that on a consistent basis. And I have the ability to withstand the market moving down here about 10%, right? So Boeing can drop 10% in one month 
before I start losing money on this trade. If I'm long Boeing and the market moves down 10%, guess what? I'm down 10%, right? So it, it gives you some resistance to a stock market crash. It doesn't give you immunity to a stock market crash, but it does give you resistance. So what if you combine that with a hedging strategy? where you're giving yourself resistance to a stock market crash, the market can go down 10% before you even start losing. And by that time, your hedge is also picking up uh, the tab, right? So that's uh, certainly uh, possible. And I just picked Boeing out of the blue uh, because it is one that I've traded and it is one that I've sold puts on. I'm not currently in a short put on this one, but uh, it's not one of the better ones right now. Um, it was earlier this year, I actually sold $50 puts in Boeing and brought in a significant annualized return uh, with that. So rather than be long stocks, you can actually sell out of the money puts that will bring in well above average uh, returns that provide resistance, not immunity, but resistance to a stock market crash. That's one way that you can reduce your market exposure. Uh, here's another example, Tesla. Tesla is now in the uh, in uh, the S&P. Tesla is a very volatile stock. And for me, it's dangerous. I would not be long Tesla. Um, I know there's lots of gains uh, available, but it's a very volatile stock. And if Tesla goes, because it's in the S&P, if Tesla goes, guess what? It's going to weigh on the market. It's going to weigh down the S&P as well. And so in uh, in Tesla, I can implement a strategy with reduced market exposure by selling a three-week Tesla 500 strike put for $500. Okay, it's three weeks out. And that comes to, again, a 17% annualized return. Now, right now, Tesla's trading at 664. Okay, 664. And if Tesla drops 25%, that's when I start losing money technically based on intrinsic value that's when i would actually start losing money um, as far as intrinsic value is concerned in tesla now if i'm long tesla and the market drops 25 percent, guess what i'm losing 25 percent so i'm creating an annualized return of as much as 17 percent. i'm out of the money by 25 percent and um, if uh, stocks crash, and again, if, if Tesla goes down, it's going to weigh on SPY, then I've got my hedge in place. And uh, it might start uh, uh, offsetting some of those losses, depending on uh, um, the correlation between Tesla and the overall SPY. So my main put selling strategy, it's called hyper options. Uh, that's exactly what I do. I go out of the money and um, I just ended a winning streak that has been over the last six and a half months. Uh, we have not suffered a loss in six and a half months on this thing until Friday when I actually suffered a very small loss and that ended my 67% winning streak. And those are actual trades, actual fills and actual signals uh, that I provide. And this is all that we're doing. We're selling out of the money puts for significant annualized returns, providing resistance not immunity, but resistance to a stock market crash. And uh, then I uh, also implement my hedging approach with that. And the combination of the two uh, is just phenomenal. And I'll talk just a little bit more about that um, here in a second. But you might ask, how does put selling provide resistance to the stock market crash? Well, I've already explained that to some degree, but let me show you how crazy this gets. I'm, I'm just going to show you this one trade. It's one of the best trades I've ever made in my entire life. Uh, as far as probabilities are concerned, it's actually number two. And you wouldn't believe what number one was. Um, and it was recently. And it was actually in GME. That's That was, uh, from a probability standpoint, I've never taken a trade that had a higher probability of success than the one I did in GME. When GME was trading at like, $400. Not going to get into that one right now. Here's one in AAL. American Airlines. This was last uh, last year in October. Middle of October, we were able to sell $1 puts in American Airlines when American Airlines was trading at $12 a share. Uh, now, we had to go out a year, but we were able to sell it for 
18% of the strike or about a 22% uh, of the risk. 22% of the risk. But the thing was $11 out of the money. It was 99.81% probability of success if you held on till expiration. I don't hold on till, uh, until expiration, but uh, we were able to exit this in two months. At six cents, we gained 12, uh, 12 cents on the, it's not a lot, but we traded big. Um, 12 cents on the gain, that's a 77% annualized return with a 99.81% probability of success. That's how crazy some of these opportunities can get. And if you add a hedging strategy to this type of approach, the long-term compounding effect, compounding, remember, can be ginormous. So never fear a stock market crash, again, by two different ways. Number one is uh, implement a solid hedging strategy and make sure you pay for it. And number two, decrease your overall, use strategies that decrease your overall risk exposure. That's what this is trading. That's what I showed you at the beginning of, um, of, the, uh, of the presentation today. Uh, this is the small hedge fund that I'm trading. Here's how crazy this gets. With what I just showed you and another strategy that I'm about to show you a little bit more information on, um, I actually uh, can see every single stock position that I'm in go to zero and my account only has a 30% risk exposure and that's without hedging. That's what trading strategies that have lower risk exposure can do. And I, I know some of that, that might be lost on some of you. Like what? Is that really true? It, absolutely. If every single stock position that I'm in goes to zero, the account only has a 30% risk exposure and that's without my hedging. With my hedging, it's much, much, much smaller. So um, it is a very, very powerful approach. Now, if you don't have a big enough account to sell put options in some of these stocks, um, or you may wanna start with something a little lower risk, that's fine, you can do that as well. And so what I'm gonna show you is um, a powerful low risk approach that can blow the best performing stock on the planet over the next five years out of the market. Uh, the best performing stock over the last seven years was Netflix. And it produced, I forget, something like a 7,000% return. Um, actually it was uh, between 2012-ish and 2018, I think was the, the uh, massive move in Netflix. Nothing, uh, nothing came close. And uh, if that were to do it again, right? If you were to find the next Netflix, that's not even close to what this can do. So the reason that this strategy is great is not because of the strategy itself. It's actually, uh, it's actually kind of a really low producing strategy, but it's also one of the most efficient for compounding. And that's where you get into uh, the compounding, uh, the importance of compounding. Uh, again, if you can increase your overall efficiency as far as compounding is concerned, you're talking about massive, massive increases in your growth. And I call this the 100K option play, and I don't have time to go into it. Um, I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples, and then I'm gonna give it to you for free. So hang with me and I'll show you how to do that. So a single stock traded once every couple of months, uh, or excuse me, every couple of weeks using a low risk option strategy produces monster annualized returns. Uh, so we're talking about one stock in the 100K option play, that's it. And it's super low risk. Here's an example of some trades. First of all, days in the trade eight, net profit on the trade 40, max risk 110 bucks, probability profit 72%. Look at the annualized return. 1,636%. Here's another one, six day trade uh, and 81% probability of success with 2,500% annualized return is what that one closed out at. Uh, and all these are actual trade examples, not hypothetical. Here's another one, seven days, 1,476 annualized percent, uh, percent re return. And the reason that it is so important is because if you can just make a little bit of money every week and apply an efficient compounding approach, you're talking about astronomical gains over a short period of time. $10 a week on a $5,000 account, if you compound it properly on a lowest strategy, can compound into $35,000 in five years. 
If you can increase that to $20 on average a week, you're talking about growing it to $135,000, which beats every single stock, the best performing stock of any five-year period over the last 20 years. Uh, I, that, again, is probably going to be lost on some of you, but I cannot explain to you how important compounding is. Go to $30, $40, $50 a week, and you're talking about growing just monster, monster uh, profits. And so I don't have time to give you the exact details of these, this trade in this presentation, but I am going to give it to you. Uh, just type in 100k, 100k.paydaystocks.com, and you'll get a free ebook that completely reveals the exact stock that I'm using right now, the strategy, the exact compounding table, and everything that could potentially produce as much as 100 grand in just the, your first year if you start with a five law and apply the compounding. It's not guaranteed, obviously, but super low risk, massive potential payoff, and I'm going to give it to you for free. Here's a couple of people that are doing it. Uh, I'm doing the cross compounding from the beginning of January, inspired by your webinar and trading plans. I started with two lots then, and today I'm trading 16. Here's another one, 55 lots. He started with five lots in October, and he's trading 55 lots now. So go to that go to that uh, uh, URL address. Just type that in your web box, and you'll be able to get the 100k option play absolutely free all right man i i smoked it to get in there at uh 57 minutes <laughs> and you made it <laughs> ryan you made it and there were several questions that came up and we don't have enough time to answer all of them but one of the several people kind of said you know, do you offer some kind of a, a service where you trade for people? Somebody had mentioned something called trade partner, the type of thing where, you know, people can't watch the charts all day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my suggestion is to go to this uh, site and sign up, get your free ebook. You'll be on our list. We'll give you all sorts of information. You can also call Spring, uh, Spring 918-203-7547. Uh, I've been doing this a long time. I have so much stuff to offer. It's not even funny. I mean, if you're interested in trading in any aspect, I've got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> sounds sounds fantastic. And there were a number of questions that came up here with regards to, you know, when do you sell an option? When do you sell a put? Uh, and it just, it just over and over again, let me see if I can pick something out real quick here. When you sell the OTM puts, do you buy the puts for a hedge or do you wait until the, until you are put the stock? That's a great. Uh, uh, that's a great question. So I do it to where um, uh, the any market has a very very low exposure in my overall portfolio, and then I hedge the entire portfolio with spy, or with another um, uh, ETF. Uh, so I do it based on limited risk exposure on any given trade, and then I hedge the whole thing in one shot. Wow! Fantastic. Well, guys, yeah. once again, we, you know, Ryan, thank you so much for your time. I know that you're a busy guy and to be able to grab an hour from you and what you did in an hour for us is just amazing. We're delighted to have you here. Always enjoy having you on our webinars and, you know, the comments coming in. Excellent job. Terrific job. And, and folks, really, the 100K option play, um, you know, for free, it's a great way to get introduced into the thinking and the mind of Ryan Jones and the kinds of things that he has done over the years uh, to basically be the successful trader that he is. So fantastic job. I hope you have a great day, my man. Appreciate it, Ollie. Appreciate Thanks, it Ryan. very much. Thank you. Thank you. So let me bring this up here, folks. Once again, that was Ryan Jones terrific guy uh, and uh, several books that he's authored you know the focus on compounding is huge with Ryan and if you don't understand what that is that is something that you all definitely need to understand uh, a special offer for the 100k option blueprint you know producing average returns of 1400 a year the compounding strategies the blueprint you can go to westmarktrading.com forward slash jones and that will also take you to that link and this is a free ebook from Ryan so fantastic there and you know what Jeanette here we are wow, man we're like a Swiss clock aren't we